In addition to all the general and sports specific benefits the physical practice of yoga offers, mindfulness through meditation, whether it's moving or still, is extremely powerful. It can elevate performance beyond what we thought we were capable of. Here are some reasons why athletes should practice. A study in the Journal of Health Psychology found that for athletes, meditation offers a way to stay motivated and excited to exercise and practice regularly. It helps you to feel more satisfied with the work and effort you put in during practices. Being present gives you more capacity to tap into your inner drive, have clear thinking, and be more responsive. Under the pressures of competition, it can be easy to lose focus on what a sport is all about. It is easy for sports to become about beating the other team or opponent no matter what. Mindful athletes can see sports as a place where like-minded people compete in a sport they are all passionate about. Bringing the spirit back into your game may allow us to compete for healthier reasons than just trying to beat opponents. A great example is Coach Phil Jackson. He practiced mindfulness with his teams and still holds the record of winning 11 NBA championships. His perspective was that performance would be elevated if players could align who they are and how they live with authenticity. He had tremendous success with this thought process with both the Bulls and the Lakers. It became the standardized process for his teams to center and ground themselves through mindfulness and meditation. Data shows that we have more than 50,000 thoughts going through our heads daily. Some thoughts can be on the negative side of the scale. For athletes, negative thoughts equate to inferior performance. A period of mental pause before practice, a workout, a game, match, or meet allows us to reset our minds and to enter our next activity in space that promotes positive thoughts and positive intentions. Pre-game meditation or mental rehearsal can be the difference in your level of performance. Studies also show that beliefs affect real-life actions. Negative beliefs can profoundly impact an athlete's performance. You can change your negative beliefs by being more aware of your thoughts. Understand self-study, what works for you and what doesn't. On the mat, on the field, court, track, and in life. When you find something that works for you, figure out how you can do it again, even improve it, to help in your growth. When something does not work, results in you feeling bad or disrupts your peace, identify the cause and commit to not putting yourself in the same situation. Being mindful during meditation and remember, yoga is moving meditation. Allow us to track your thought patterns and to change them when it serves us. Being mindful or meditating doesn't mean you always have to slip into the gaps between thoughts. It can be about becoming aware of the thought patterns that we do have. The only way to limit negative thoughts is to be aware of these thoughts and to change the negatives into positives. If we are aware of our thoughts, we can take them to the next level by adding an element of visualization to them through meditation. Visualize your success. Use your senses to see, hear, smell, taste, and feel the successful results you wish to create. Meditation improves sleep quality. Good quality sleep is imperative for athletes who aspire to greatness. Sleep affects your mood, stress levels, energy levels, concentration, and a variety of other performance-related components. Sleep affects the recovery of muscles, and the functioning of your immune system. A study conducted at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Health found that meditation improves sleep and sleep quality. As a result, those who meditate regularly are also less likely to get sick. Let's practice. To start out, we'll take a comfortable seat. Relax the shoulders and lengthen through the spine. Think of the top or the crown of the head shining up towards the ceiling. Hands are down on the legs for grounding energy or up, palms up for receiving energy. We'll take three part breath as we inhale. Think about filling the belly, the middle section of the lungs and then the top section of the lungs up by the clavicles. Slowly exhale, letting the top of the chest drop, the middle ribs come in and gently squeezing the core like you're doing a crunch or a sit up. When we take six seconds or longer, inhales and exhales, it actively supports our parasympathetic nervous system. So take a few rounds of slow inhalations and exhalations. Many people are pretty shallow breathers, only using one of these sections of lung space. So we want to be very mindful to engage all three. We can also add a mindful component to our breath. We can scan the body and if there's any 
energy or feelings that don't serve us, any feelings of negativity, injury, illness, stress, or tension, you can think about breathing those qualities out with your exhalations. The qualities that we want to embody and exude, the qualities we want to take in, our positivity, our peace, our health, our wellness, you can visualize bringing those qualities into your body with every single in-breath. After the end of your next exhalation, we'll slowly lay back onto the back for Apanasana Knee to Chest Pose. Take your right knee into your chest as your head relaxes on the mat. You're gonna hold on to the right shin and let the left leg go long. Sometimes it feels good to hold the leg still. Sometimes it might feel good to take the right knee out and in towards the center of the midline, maybe making gentle circles, whatever feels good to you. If you wanna add an energetic component, you can let the left heel hover off the ground and let the shoulder blades lift off the mat bringing your right knee to your nose or your forehead. When you're ready, we'll switch, extending the right leg long and taking the left leg into the chest. Again, relax the body at first and have any organic movement, taking the left leg to the right and the left or maybe gentle circles, whatever feels good on that hip. We'll add the energetic component, if you did it on side one, of lifting the right heel off the mat and lifting the shoulder blades, reaching your knee towards your nose or your forehead. Take a breath here and then relax. We'll let both of the feet come down and crawl over onto our hands and knees tabletop. Wrists are directly below shoulders. Knees are directly below hips. Gently let the crown or the top of your head shine straight forward, your neck being ex an extension of your spine. From here, we'll go into sunbirds. The right hand and the left leg will lift up wrist, shoulder height, and ankle hip height. Foot is flexed and thumb is to the sky like you are shaking someone's hand. Look down at the mat, thinking about that long neck and spine. And then on your next exhale, breathe those limbs down. Inhale up the other side, right leg and left arm. Thumb to the sky like you're shaking someone's hand, find length. And then breathe those limbs down. We'll do another on each side and pause when you lift those limbs up. Imagine stretching from the shoulder and the hip. Maybe find a bit more length. And then breathing the limbs down. We're working on connecting breath and body. An inhale, we'll take the limbs up. And an exhale, we'll take the limbs down. We can add a crunch on our next round. So when right hand, left leg lift up, find length. And then on your exhale, arch the spine, bring the elbow and knee together, engage the abs. We'll extend long before bringing the limbs to the mat. Go ahead and try this on your other side. Find extension. And then elbow and knee will crunch together, arch the spine, engage the core and bring the limbs back down to the mat. If you wanna continue with the crunch, you can. One more variation. When your limbs reach up, you'll bend the knee and the hand will reach back for the foot. It might just be a reach. It might be a bind and a connection with the foot. Gaze is forward and we'll press the foot into the hand to feel a deeper stretch. When you're ready, extend the limbs long and take them back to the mat. We'll do one more round on each side to make sure that you're even. Work to keep your gaze towards the mat so we think about that long neck and long spine. And after you've done two sets of the reach backs, you can take your knees mat width apart and sink your glutes back for child's pose. 
Arms can be long, forehead coming to the mat, or if you need a break for your shoulders, bend your elbows, take one hand on top of the other for a little pillow for your forehead. On your next breath, we'll breathe ourselves up into tabletop and through downward facing dog. It's really important to get a deep diagonal wrist to shoulders here. So once we're in tabletop, toes curl under, hips lift up and back. We're light on the hands, fingers spread wide, palms are flat, and we're breathing our heart or our chest towards our thighs. You can bend right knee and left knee or shake out the hips. Have some organic movement here as it's our first downward facing dog. And then when you're ready, Re-lift the hips and press down through both heels to feel a nice length down the backs of the legs. We'll slowly walk our hands back to our feet and draw our spines up into a standing position. We'll identify where our iliac crests are or um, like the crease of our hips where that bone protrudes. We can make fists over those bones and then look down at our feet. So this is when I say feet are hip width apart. We can release the hands and then think about the four corners of the feet under the big toe mound, pinky toe mound, inside, outside of the heels. We'll rock up on the balls of the feet and back on the heels. We'll do this a few times so that we can plant the feet and feel our body weight evenly distributed across the four corners. We can think about like rebounding up off the mat, feeling light with this even distribution of weight. Roll the shoulders down the back body, soften the shoulders, and take a moment here in mountain pose, going into a classical sun salutation. Palms will come together up at heart center, and from here, we'll drive the arms up overhead, do a big arm circle, and bring the hands to the sacrum. Fingers pointing down. We'll lift through the spine, no compression on the low back, and gaze up at the ceiling for a standing back bend. Make sure you can still breathe here, all three sections of the lung space, no holding the breath. And then at the next exhale, slowly release the hands and dive forward into a full forward fold. Head and neck are heavy and we can reach for the mat, maybe hold on to the forearms to offer a little bit of extra weight to help you into this fold. Maybe hands come behind the calves and you can pull yourself in towards your midline, whatever works for you. We'll plant the hands and you might need to walk to the top of your mat. Plant the hands and right foot will step back into a runner's lunge. Left ankle is gonna stack over or under the left knee. Right glute is engaged. Right heel is strong. Think about engaging your core and finding a nice diagonal line from your pelvis to the crown of your head. Long neck, long spine. Hold here for a moment and then plant the hands, left foot steps back, we're in a plank. Wrists are stacked under shoulders, strong core. Tricep push up, bend the elbows towards the belly and melt the heart down, then the hips down and then the toes. Bring the big toes together to touch and point the toes, pressing the feet into the mat. Gaze forward. Hands come at heart level or we hover the hands for cobra. This is all lower back work. Strong low back as we lift the heart, planting the feet. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Hands come to the mat, hips come back over the ankles, child's pose. Again, arms can be long or you can bend the elbows, creating a hand pillow for the forehead. Inhale up to tabletop, wrist under shoulders, knees under hips, and then curl the toes under, lift the hips high, downward facing dog. Deep diagonal wrist to shoulder, take your time, you can always have organic movement, and then breathe the heart towards the thighs, pressing the heels down towards the earth. Gazing forward, step your right foot between your hands, runner's lunge. Stack the ankle underneath the knee. Engage the glutes, hips are square. Engage the core. Find length in the spine. 
Long diagonal, breathe here. And then back foot steps forward, hips are high, head is low, full forward fold. We can hold on to the forearms, reach to the earth, or grab the backs of the calves. Relax the neck. Sometimes here it's nice to even nod your head gently like you're shaking it yes, or like you're shaking it no, to release the neck. Take a full breath in and out. And then on an inhale, you can slowly round up one vertebra at a time to standing. Once you're standing, roll the shoulders back, elevate the arms, take a big sweep back so that you're supporting your sacrum. One more time, find length in the spine, no compression, standing back bend. On your next breath, come tall, Arms will come down and then sweep forward at heart center. Reground, plant through the four corners of both feet. Stand tall, close the eyes, take a breath and body scan. From the crown of your head all the way to the soles of your feet, just notice how you feel without judgment, without competition, without comparison. From the top of your mat, Step your left foot back so that your feet are perpendicular. Look at your front heel and align it with the middle of your back arch. We want a deep bend in the right knee so that it's stacked over the ankle or slightly behind. So totally perpendicular feet. Our hips are in the side plane. So if you take your hands onto your hips, that right hip is directly in front of your left. You might look at your right kneecap and point it more towards the pinky toe side of your foot. Gaze at the long edge of your mat and center your torso so you're not leaning forward or back. And bring the arms up, wrists, shoulder height. Soften the shoulders away from the ears and gaze over your middle right finger. Take a nice full breath in and out. This is warrior two or virvadrasana two. We're gonna cartwheel the hands down to frame the front foot and lift the back heel up, coming back to our runner's lunge. From here, lower body stays the same and we elevate the upper body for crescent warrior. Hands can come to heart centered. Keep the hips squared and the back glute engaged. Our left elbow will come across to the outside of our right thigh and will slowly invite a twist, maybe looking forward, maybe looking over the right shoulder. We'll hold for just a few moments and then slowly unwind, coming back into that runner's lunge. Let your left knee come down at a diagonal to your hip. If you want more cushion, you can put a blanket under the left knee. Point the toes so that the toes are grounded into the mat and then lift your torso, taking the hands onto your hips and pressing the hips down so that you get a left quad stretch. If you want more, bring the hands to heart center. You can lift them up and even take a back bend to increase the quad stretch. If you're in that back bend, slowly bring the hands down. Left hand will come to a block or the mat and we'll invite another twist. Chest will rotate to the inside of the right thigh and right arm can come up to the sky. You can breathe here or if you want more, bend the left knee and reach for the foot. You may pull the foot in towards the glute for a deeper stretch. If you have that bind, slowly release. Right hand will come back to frame. The right foot will curl the back toes under. And from our runner's lunge, we'll rotate the heel down and cartwheel the hands up, coming back to warrior two. Look at the front heel, align it with the middle back arch. From here, we'll relax the arms and then heel toe the feet together and step to the top of the mat. Take a moment, rock forward and back, reground through the four corners of the feet. Now our right foot will sweep back, again, warrior two, 
Perpendicular feet. Front heel aligns with the middle of the back arch. Body weight is evenly distributed between the four corners of both feet. Left knee stacks or comes slightly behind the left ankle. Look at your left kneecap. Maybe it comes a little bit more towards the pinky toe side of the foot. Gaze at the long edge of the mat and center your torso. Sweep the arms up, wrist shoulder height, and soften the shoulders away from the ears, looking over your middle left finger. Taking a nice full breath in and out. We'll cartwheel the hands down to frame the left foot. Lift the right heel up, runner's lunge. Adjust here, engage the back glute, and then elevate the torso, bringing hands to heart center, crescent warrior. Strong lower body. Right elbow will come across to the outside of the left thigh. We'll invite a twist, working to stack the shoulders, looking straight ahead or maybe over your left shoulder. Slowly unwind, we'll frame the left foot and melt the right knee down at a diagonal to the right hip, pointing the toes, resting the toes as well. Again, elevate the torso, hands on the hips, drop the hips down, feel the right quad stretch. Breathe here if you're comfortable. You can stay here or take the hands through heart center, let them elevate overhead, maybe invite a back bend. Stay connected to that three-part breath. And when you're ready, we'll glide the hands down. Right hand will come to a block or the mat, and we'll twist our chest to the inside of the left thigh, inviting the left arm up, or maybe bending the back right knee. Left hand reaches for the foot for a deeper bind. Remember, no competition, no comparison, no judgment in yoga, so honor your body. If you have a bind, slowly release it. We'll come back to our runner's lunge, lifting the back leg or knee off the ground, and then cartwheeling the arms up, coming back into warrior two, checking the alignment, front heel to the middle of the back arch, finding a tall spine, Relax the arms and then heel toe the feet together. And again, come to the top edge of your mat. From here, we'll keep the hips squared with the top edge of the mat. Right foot will step back and we'll adjust our feet about mat width apart. We all have skeletal uniqueness, so we're all a little bit different in how uh, our bones come together, even uh, right and left sides. So just be gentle with yourself and see what feels right for you. We'll bend the left knee so that it stacks over the left ankle. And we want the right heel to be grounded. We wanna feel a calf stretch in the back right leg. Once you feel like your weight is evenly distributed, your hips are square to the top edge of your mat, you can elevate the arms overhead and soften the shoulders away from the ears. Find a gaze point, maybe on the floor, maybe on the wall. Take a big breath in, and as you exhale, squeeze the core. This is Warrior One or Virvadrasana One. On our next breath, we'll move into Warrior Three. Grounding through the four corners of the left foot, we'll sweep the hands either down to blocks, down to the mat, or maybe to the hips. We wanna find a long spine, flex the right foot, our hips stay squared to the top edge of the mat or parallel to the ground. We're finding a long line of energy here. Hands can stay on the mat or the ground. They can come to the hips. They can reach heart center or come forward, whatever works for you. Take some nice deep breaths here, continuing to flex your foot. And if your top hip is open, you're just gonna adjust slightly, dropping this hip just a little bit more, keeping the foot flexed. Continue to take your nice full and deep breaths. And on your next inhale, allow the right leg to come down and bring yourself up to standing. 
Grab your block or create a block stack by putting one low height, one high height. We're gonna take the left foot, ground it again. Right hand will be on the right hip. Left hand will reach for your block pile. Standing, balancing half moon, flex the right foot as you elevate and work to stack the hips. If you feel tight, you can always raise the block. And if you feel solid, you might wanna stack the shoulders as well. Lifting the right hand off the hip. Palm will face the same direction that your gaze is. Taking a few nice deep breaths here. If you fall out of the pose, you can always take your time to get back into it. And after your next breath, slowly unwind, bringing both feet to the mat. We'll step to the top of the mat and do the other side. Left foot will step back for warrior one. Right knee will bend and stack over the ankle. Left heel will plant. Make sure that you feel a calf stretch. Hips are square to the top edge of the mat. When you feel solid, elevate the arms, palms facing in towards each other. Soften the shoulders. And as you breathe, those exhalations are gonna be opportunities to engage the core nice and strong. If at any point in time you feel like you need more of a calf stretch, you can step the back foot further back to achieve that. When you're ready, soften the arms down by your hips, maybe slide the right foot to the center of your mat, Flex the left foot as you go into warrior three. Hands can come onto blocks or the mat. We'll flex the back foot and work to get ankle hip height. You can look back at your hips or if you notice that one hip is higher than the other, you can take your time to adjust. Just dropping this hip. And when the hips are squared, you can invite the leg to rise just a little bit more. Taking another full breath in and out. Allow the back foot to drop down and bring your torso up. We'll plant the four corners of the right foot, get our block or our block stack ready. Left hand on the left hip, standing balancing half moon. Right hand will reach for the blocks. Once we're solid, we'll elevate that left leg, flexing the foot, working to stack the hips. And then if we feel comfortable, we can work to stack the shoulders as well. We'll rotate the wrist so the palm is facing the same direction the eye gaze is. Maybe energizing through all the fingertips, thinking of lines of energy, nice full and deep breaths. Make sure there's not too much pressure on that right wrist. When you're ready, slowly melt the top hand down and both feet come to the mat. We'll step to the top of our mat, maybe rock forward and back again. Just notice how you feel again. No judgment, we're just checking in, we're developing, we're building a relationship with our own body, getting to know it better. Next breath, we'll step the left foot back, perpendicular feet, heel to heel alignment this time. Heel to heel alignment, perpendicular feet. You might wanna grab a block and put it on the inside, the big toe side of your right foot. Going into trikonasana or triangle pose. Hands will come onto the hips and we're gonna straighten both legs. We're gonna engage the quads. If you hyperextend your knee joints, you can keep a micro bend or a small bend in them, but otherwise we're working on engaging those quads. We'll take the left hip and tilt it to the back of our mat, and then breathe the arms, wrists, shoulder height. Right arm will lead us, reaching with just the right hand, and the right hand will come down to the right shin or to the block, and we'll lift up through the left hand. Fingers are spread wide. If that ball and socket of the shoulder joint feels a little tight or off, you can do a full arm circle to see if that feels better. Rotate, so again, your palm is facing the same direction your eye gaze is. And if you want more for a spinal twist, you can bend the left elbow and bring it behind the back body. 
Maybe you look up at the ceiling. Take a nice full breath in and out here. And then if the left elbow is bent, we'll straighten it and we'll bring our torso back up to standing. Our footing will remain the same. We're gonna do revolved triangle. So we're facing the long edge of the mat and we're gonna cactus our arms. So bending the elbows about 90 degrees. We're gonna rotate our chest to face our right shin. And then we're gonna hinge down, pausing like a flat back, like you're balancing something on your back. Feel this in the right hamstrings. And then our left hand will come to a block or the mat and we'll rotate facing the inside of our right thigh. Right arm can lift up towards the sky, spread the fingers wide, Feel those long lines of energy. Nice, full, deep breaths in and out. After your next breath, right hand will come down, face the right foot, cactus the arms, create that flat back again, and then slowly draw your torso up and turn to face the long edge of the mat. Relax the arms and step your left foot forward, coming to the top of your mat. Pause. If you want to roll forward and back, do it. And then right foot will step back. Heel to heel alignment, perpendicular feet. Strong straight legs, engaging the quads. Hands on the hips. Tilt the back right hip to the back of the mat. Breathe the arms up, wrist shoulder height. Reach forward with the left hand and then hinge down. Left hand coming to the shin, a block or the mat. Work to stack the shoulders, spread the top fingers wide. Maybe bend the top elbow, reaching behind the back body to help deepen the twist, maybe looking up at the sky. If your top elbow is bent, We'll straighten it and draw the torso up. Re-engage the quads and then facing the long edge of the mat, we'll cactus the arms. Rotate the chest to face the left shin and slowly melt down, pausing halfway, long spine, focusing on the hamstrings. Right hand will come to the block or the mat. We'll twist facing the inside of the left thigh and then Left arm can come up towards the ceiling again, spreading the fingers wide. Revolved triangle pose. Nice full deep breaths here. Next breath. Both hands will frame the left foot. We'll find length in the spine, cactusing the arms. Slowly draw your torso up. Rotate to face the long edge of the mat, relax the arms and heel toe the feet together, coming to the top of your mat for pyramid pose. We'll step the right foot back and have the heels, the toes and the hips all facing forward. Ground through the four corners of both feet. See what's comfortable for you. And they don't have to be perfect, but as much as possible. Heels, toes, hips, all face forward. We can take the hands behind the back body, holding on to the forearms. Or we can take our, interlace our fingers together and roll the shoulder blades down the back body. Decide what works for you. Again, engaging the quads, we'll find length in the spine and slowly hinge down. You might naturally twist, but try to come straight down in between your legs to the center of the mat. If you have your arms bound, we can invite the arms off the back body so that we're not only stretching the front hamstrings, but the shoulder joint. Full breath in and out. On your next exhale, see if you can drop your chest a bit lower. We can invite our body to do things. Sometimes it says yes, sometimes no, it's all good. But on your next inhale, you'll slowly rise up to standing and then don't release your arm or your hand bind until you're all the way tall. Once you're tall, you can release. We'll switch. Right foot will step forward, left foot will step back. 
Again, take your time, maybe mat width apart. You don't have to feel like you're on a tightrope. Heels, toes, hips all face forward. Come tall and engage your quads. Decide what arm bind you wanna take and then slowly find length and hinge from your hips. Try not to twist as you hinge down, but let your chest be centered focusing on those front hamstrings. And if you've engaged or interlaced your fingers, you can invite the arms off the back body to stretch your shoulders. Using your exhale to deepen the pose. On your next inhale, slowly rise up and wait till you're all the way tall to release your arm or your hand bind. We'll step both feet to the top of the mat. If you wanna shake it out or roll forward and back, please feel free to do so. Coming into Eagle Prep, we'll ground through the four corners of the left foot. Find a point of focus to look at, again, not moving on the floor, on the wall, somewhere like that. We'll take our right ankle and bring it above the left knee, flexing the right foot. Hands will come to heart center. We'll slowly bend into the left knee, sinking our hips down. And we wanna focus on the outside of the right hip. So maybe point the right knee down towards the earth a bit more to feel this on the outside of the hip. Nice full deep breath in and out, eagle prep pose. And slowly we'll draw ourselves up knowing it's okay if you fall out of the pose. We'll take that again, eagle prep a second time, or we can come into full eagle. So again, grounding through the four corners of the left foot. We'll bend the left elbow at 90 degrees. Right hand will come under, backs of the hands or fronts of the hands connect. We'll drop the elbows to the sternum. Notice how this feels across the shoulder blades. And then we'll lift the elbows up. Again, stretching across the shoulders. We'll cross our right leg completely over the left, pointing the toes, and again, sink down, working on maintaining your balance and elevating the elbows if you feel uh, the need to have a deeper shoulder stretch. For five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly come tall and then release the arms. We'll ground now through the four corners of the right foot. Eagle prep, hands at heart center. Left ankle comes above the right knee, flex the foot, find your point of focus, bend into the right knee, slowly drop the hips down, and then maybe point the left knee more towards the earth to feel this stretch in the outside of the left hip. Slow, deep, focused breaths here. When you're ready, come nice and tall. You can always take two rounds of eagle prep, but full eagle. Reground through the four corners of the right foot. We'll bend the right elbow. Left arm comes underneath. Backs of the hands connect or fronts. Elbows drop down to the sternum. Feel that stretch. Start to lift the elbows up and cross the left leg completely over the right, pointing the toes, sinking the hips down. As you find your place, maybe play with the arms, raising them up or down to feel the best stretch for you. Five, four, three, two, and one. Come nice and tall and release the arm bind, stepping both feet to the ground, finding balance. Our standing hand to foot sequence here, we're gonna ground through the four corners of the left foot. We'll bring the right knee up in towards our chest and hold on to the right shin. We can stay here. We can interlace our fingers underneath the right thigh and flex the foot and extend it long. We might use a strap to grab the sole of the foot and lift it up, or maybe our peace fingers or our hands connect to the right foot and we focus forward. Again, we'll try for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly let the right foot come down. So notice how you feel 
In these poses, we're trying not to lean to the right or the left, the front or the back, but remain nice and tall. We'll now do our external and our internal rotations. Grounding again through the four corners of the left foot, we'll draw the right knee up and grab the shin. We'll hold on to it with the right hand as the left hand comes to the left hip. We can externally rotate from the hip, bringing the right knee into the right side plane. We can stay here. We can grab underneath the thigh and flex the right foot. We can use the strap or we can use a hand bind. If it helps you to balance, you can take your left arm out long or cactus the left arm and take some nice deep breaths. Exhales are always an opportunity to deepen. Inhales are always an opportunity to soften. Try to stand as tall as you can, and then we'll slowly bring the right leg back into the front plane and put it down for a moment. Now our internal twist. Reground through the four corners of the left foot. Draw the right knee up. Left hand is gonna connect underneath the kneecap and we're gonna um, cactus the right arm. We're gonna bring it into the back plane as our chest rotates to the inside of the right thigh, and we're gonna look back at our right thumb. We can extend grabbing under the thigh if we wanna flex the right foot and let it go straight. Again, you can use a strap to connect or bind with the foot, whatever works for you. If you come out of the pose, take your time, get back into it. If you wanna straighten the arm, the right arm, and invite a deeper twist, you can do that. And then slowly bring everything back to center and plant the feet down. Awesome job, we gotta do side two. So now we'll ground through the four corners of the right foot. Bring the left shin up towards the chest, hold on to the shin, work on your balance, find your point of focus. Hands can interlace underneath the thigh, flexing the left foot. Again, using your strap or binding hands with the foot. We'll take a few breaths here. Working to stand tall. We can always micro bend the base knee if that feels more safe and comfortable. When you feel balanced and even from side one, let the left foot come down and take a pause. External rotation. Reground through the four corners of the right foot. Draw the left shin up. Right hand will come to the right hip and then external rotation of the hip. Take the knee into the side plane. You can keep the knee bent, straighten the leg grabbing under the thigh, use the strap or bind with the hand. Continue to take those deep, full breaths, checking in with all your lung space and notice if you're leaning, try to come nice and tall with the torso. When you're ready, slowly allow for the left leg to come into the front plane and take a break. Last one for this sequence, the internal twist. Regrounding through the four corners of the right foot, we'll bring the left shin up, right hand will grab the left shin, cactus the left arm, and then twist belly into the inside of the left thigh. Gaze at your left thumb. Again, we can straighten the leg or use the strap if that serves us, connect to the foot or extend the left arm long, focusing back at the thumb. Use your breath as a tool. Deep full exhales can help you achieve balance. Take a nice breath and slowly unwind. Bring everything back to center. Face one of the long edges of your mats. We're gonna go into a standing wide leg fold. So your feet will be wide, but they'll be parallel to each other like the number 11. We'll take hands onto the hips. And if you guys wanna stagger a little bit, you can. Sometimes we are, especially when we're with our teams, kind of in close quarters. So we'll slowly hinge down and hands can reach to the mat. They can reach through the legs. 
or each hand can grab its corresponding ankle and you can draw your chest in towards your midline. Let your head and neck go heavy. Nice, full, deep breaths. Next exhale, go as deep as you can go. And then on an inhale, bring your hands to your shins and find that long back. Imagine you're balancing a glass of water on it. Engage your glutes and press back through your hamstrings. If you feel like you want a deeper stretch, maybe take your knuckles or your hands to the mat or the ground and keep pushing back through your hamstrings. Your neck is long. And then bring your hands to your hips and draw your torso up. Beautiful. We'll heel toe the feet in towards each other and then just bend into the knees and squat down, coming onto the mat. You'll face the top edge of your mat and we'll prepare for Gomukhasana or Cow's Face Pose. We'll bend the left knee and have that knee pointing straight ahead. Taking the sole of the right foot and inviting it to come to the outside of the left thigh. We'll hold on to that right shin. This might be a hip stretch for you. So if it is, you can breathe here and work on a tall spine. If it's in your practice to work to stack your knees, they don't have to be perfect, but you can work to stack one knee on top of another as close as they come and allow your ankles to come out a little bit further away from your hips. If you're here, you can gently place both hands on top of your right knee. Now to add the arms. If you're using a strap, take your strap in your left hand, left arm will go high, right arm will go low, and then you're working to bend the elbows and either use the t-shirt, the strap, or you might find an arm bind. You can tuck the chin straight down into the chest or gaze forward, but we don't wanna kink the neck to the right or the left. Invite the left elbow to go towards the sky and take a few breaths here. After your next exhalation, slowly allow both hands to come down by your hips and roll the shoulders back. Everyone will take the hands by the hips, lean back, and then uncross their legs and maybe pedal them out a little bit. Just notice how you feel. We'll then take the right knee down onto the mat, the knees pointing straight ahead. Sole of the left foot will be invited to the outside of the right thigh, and we'll start by just hugging the left shin finding balance between the glutes, sitting up tall and relaxing the shoulders. If it's in your practice to stack the knees, slowly work to stack the knees on top of each other as much as you can. Ankles coming away from your midline. Hands can come gently on top of the left knee and we're noticing how this feels in the outside of the left hip. To engage the shoulders, if we're using a strap, we'll grab it in the right hand. Right hand will come high, left arm will go low. We can tuck the chin into the chest so that we have uh, a better ability to find the bind or grab our t-shirt or use the strap and then lift up through the right elbow. Keep the chin tucked or gaze straight ahead. No kinks in the neck to the right or the left. We'll come back to our three part full breath, maybe six seconds or longer. Taking a few breaths here, being mindful of our alignment. If we start to let that right elbow drop, invite it back up towards the ceiling. After your next exhalation, slowly relax the arms, bringing them down by the hips, roll the shoulders back or forward, and then we'll plant the hands, lean back, and again, allow the legs to pedal out or come out straight in front of you. We can let those legs rest long, 
maybe rock right and left so that we can ground evenly through the glutes. Flex the feet. You can use your strap if you want to. And we'll reach high and then hinge from the hips and reach for our feet. Ocean wave breath. We can visualize an ocean wave. As that wave goes up on the beach, that's like our exhale. We're reaching forward just like the wave reaches up on the sand. When we inhale, we might soften a bit like the wave that's rolling back out into the ocean. Use your breath as a tool and combine breath and body to exhale deeply and inhale, soften the stretch. After your next deep exhale, bring the torso up. We're gonna take and sweep the feet back so that you come onto your belly. We'll bend the knees and flex the feet to the sky. We can reach our hands back and maybe we bind with the pinky toe sides of the feet. On your next inhale, you're gonna invite the thighs off the mat and the chest up. Bow pose. As you breathe, lift up as high as you can and then melt down. Let your right hand come on top of your left and put your right cheek on top of your right hand. Crocodile pose. Relax the legs, relax the feet, and use that three-part breath to exhale into the earth and find a moment of deep relaxation. On your next inhale, we'll do one more round of bow. Lifting the head, bend the knees, reach back to the pinky toe sides of the feet, and on an inhale, invite the thighs and the chest to lift. Use your breath to lift up deeper, strong back. In your next breath, come as high as you can, and then melt down, left hand on top of right, left cheek down. Close the eyes, soften the muscles of the face, and allow yourself to relax into the mat. On your next inhale, we'll roll onto our left side body for pose of infinity, bending the left knee and the left elbow. Your left thumb will come in front of your ear and the four fingers will come to the back of the head. We're gonna lift the right leg up and then grab the back of the thigh, the calf, maybe peace fingers come onto the big toe. We're gonna use our breath to pull the right leg closer to the head. Just like we did ocean wave breath in our seated forward fold. Take a few breaths, every exhale, pull the right foot towards the crown and then allow it to soften gently. We'll go one more full breath, go as deep as you can and then allow the right leg to come down to meet the left and roll over onto your right side body. Bending the right elbow and bending the right knee for balance. Upper arm is on the mat, support the head, and then lift the left leg, grabbing it on the thigh, the calf, or the foot. Again, using that connection, breath and body, exhales will help us pull the leg closer to the crown of the head, and inhales will help us to soften. We want to be even on both sides, at least three breaths and three dynamic movements. After your third exhale, you can allow the left leg to come down to the right and roll onto your back. One more pose for the hips. We're going to do a supine eagle twist. Take your legs up to the sky, flex your feet. Right leg will cross over the left, bend the knees 90 degrees, point the toes. Maybe the right foot wraps around your left calf. Maybe it doesn't, that's okay. We're gonna take our left hand 
to help those legs to twist over to the left side of your mat. Ground through the right shoulder. You can cactus your right arm. Head is relaxed and you're enjoying this spinal twist. Taking one more full deep breath here. Slowly allow the legs to come back up through center. Unwrap the legs and take the legs to the sky. Flex the feet and then invite the left leg to cross over the right. Again, pointing both toes, bending both knees. Maybe the left foot wraps around the right calf, maybe not. It's okay if one side is different than the other. Your right hand will come to the outside of the left thigh and help the legs come down onto the right side of the mat. Cactus the left arm so that the left shoulder is grounded and use your breath to help deepen the twist. Gaze can be to the right shoulder, the left shoulder, or straight up at the sky. Full deep breaths. We're staying connected to the breath. After your next full exhale, slowly unwind, bringing the legs back to a neutral position, unwrapping and finding length. You can drop the ankles about mat width apart on your mat, letting the feet drop to the right and the left. If you wanna use your blanket under the spine, under the neck, under the knees, under the ankles, feel free to do so. If your arms are long, you can invite about a 45 degree angle from the armpits and rotate the palms up to face the sky. If it feels better to take a hand in the center of the chest and the center of the belly, that's also an option. It might help you to come back to that three part yogic breath. Chin can be over the right shoulder, the left shoulder, gaze can be straight up at the sky. Let the muscles in the face relax. Let everything soften. During Shavasana, we want to fully release muscular and physical tension and stress. Use your breath as a tool. Every exhale, allow yourself to become more and more deeply relaxed. You can imagine like you're letting your body sink into a bed of soft sand. Or maybe like you're allowing your body to just float, like it's fluffy, light, like a cloud. Whatever helps you to become more deeply relaxed, use those tools. This is your opportunity to recharge, maybe practice mental rehearsal if you have a competition coming up. But if we just wanna focus on the here and the now, we can scan the body. If there's anything residual left over that does not serve you after that practice, think about bringing that negativity, that injury, that illness, bringing it to the lung space and exhaling it out, letting it go. It is no longer a part of you. With every fresh inhale, you think about those qualities that you want to embody, that you want to exude. Allow those qualities to fill every cell of your being. Remind yourself you are strong, you are powerful, you are focused, you are capable. Whatever it is you need, give yourself those reminders in this moment. Use your senses to feel what it feels like to be at your highest level of health and performance.
Taking one more full deep breath in and out. Slowly bring awareness back into the body. Think about your thumb pads and press your thumb pad into your pointer finger pad. Apply light pressure. Move the thumb pad to the middle finger pad. Apply light pressure. The ring finger pad, the pinky finger pad, and do that just a few times. Start to flex and point your feet. Start to roll your ankles and your wrists both in towards your midline and away from your midline. Think about your joints, bending your elbows, bending your knees. If you need another spinal twist for your hips or your shoulders, think about your spine and your neck. Take any movement that serves you. Honor your body. You know what you need. And gradually, in your own time, draw yourself back up to a seated position. Maybe adding a seated spinal twist or rocking back and forth. Remember, hands down for grounding your energy or up for receiving energy. Lengthen through the spine, soften the jaw and the shoulders. Thank you so much for participating in this practice. We hope that it helps and serves and that you enjoy a wonderful season.